Thank you, Vanessa. Hi, guys. Good morning, everybody. I hope you had a good night after this uh, really uh, impressive day yesterday, where we had a lot of good talks. I found it really an interesting day yesterday, so I hope we have another interesting day today. And we have the honor to start with it today. Um, we are very pleased. Thank you to Vanessa and her team that we've got invited to this event. Uh, to this event, and today we want to take you a bit, uh, give you an insight on our work, our approach to design, and um, also our thoughts on smart products as well. And um, we hope that this will also help you if you are uh, when you are thinking of new products in the end. So um, first we want to introduce ourselves. Of course, um, you can recognize us. This is uh, Sven. Guess who it is? <laughs> um, I'm Carsten, and in the middle, of the guy uh, is Ralf. He's not here today, but uh, well, he's the third founder of our company. We are based in Hanover, and um, we got to know each other actually dur during our studies. So we started our company out of our university, and we came from all across Germany together in this one spot. And, in Hanover, and that's where we got stuck, and that's where we started our company. Um, actually, in the in the beginning, why we started a company was because uh, Ralph, the guy in the middle, uh, who is not here today, he had this brilliant idea how to crack a nut in a different way, in a smart, different way, and um, he thought of an idea um, how to crack a nut with a balloon. Do you have an idea how to crack a nut with a balloon? Hmm? And a steel pole. A steel pole? Like the... No, <laughs> almost. <laughs> no, <clears throat> actually, you just uh, you, you know a slingshot, and with a slingshot you shoot something uh, in a direction, but uh, the target is far away. And this one, um, you use the balloon, you cut off the the top of the balloon, and then you enter it. You put it in this in this. Uh, in this case, and then you grab the nut and then you shoot it against the lid, and just by the impact, the nut cracks. And um, he, he did this uh, product and he went to the market and he actually uh, earned quite a lot of money with it. So we thought, okay, good idea. We'll just do a few of those projects every year and then we're uh, gonna be rich. <laughs> of course, it didn't work that well, but um, yeah. But we started. Um, in 2005, so we have 10 years uh, this year, and we started out with a with a project where we, um, at that time, you know, the the pimping was really on MTV. Uh, pimp my ride, pimp my pimp my uh, car, all these things were really popular, but nobody took care of the furniture actually. So we thought, um, why aren't we not pimping uh, the furniture piece? And we chose the, the Billy shelf from Ikea, which is the best, uh, best sold shelf in the world. So we thought that's maybe a target to him. And we did the um, Pimp My Billy project. So we, we just designed one, one shelf, which was completely different to the others. And uh, this got us some attention uh, and made it possible to, to start the company and uh, yeah, just to be recognized and to get clients. It was uh, sold, uh, uh, it was not, our, we didn't have the idea to sell it really, it was more uh, um, a showcase of our creativity and that worked out quite well. So what we do, um, today we, we talk about smart products. And uh, what we do is uh, old-fashioned analog smart products. So um, it starts with uh, small items and goes up to furniture or uh, bathtubs. And we do a lot of kitchen accessories. So it's quite a wide range of um, uh, low complex products, I would say. So and. Uh, now I, I, I want to, or we want to tell you something about our strategies or, or some, uh, you know, we are not scientists, we are just designers, but uh, if you uh, look back on your portfolio, you, you might find some um, 
de designs which have a similar approach, and that's that is what we wanted to to summarize for you. So one thing is we want to make things more beautiful. That's uh, a target which is completely. This is what all all people think what designers are doing, and uh, of course. This is not not all of it, and it's it's a very different, uh, difficult uh, thing for for a designer to say, or for a German designer to say, I want to make things more beautiful, because it, it sounds very superficial. So, uh, uh, to to what is beautiful? That's very very difficult to measure. What I did, I just googled in German, wunderschön, which is beautiful, and this is the first page what, what, what comes out. It's very funny, do you see that old guy down there? That's uh, Jopi Hesters, he, he's a, a Dutch entertainer and he's 110. So it's really strange why he's on the first page here. Uh, yeah, you see women, you see motorcycles, you see nature. Um, this is in English, beautiful, quite similar. So, um, we, we kind of had to find our own approach and um, uh, one, one thing which, which is for us maybe beautiful is um, um, that the design has, even if you do a new design, um, it should be some, something which uh, has an analogy to, to something which you already know or which is fami familiar to you and which, uh, which you which you have a personal relationship with. So uh, this is an example. Uh, we did a, a lamp um, and uh, we have a shift now from um, um, uh, the old-fashioned lighting way to LED uh, technique, which, uh, which makes it possible to make an almost an invisible lamp. It can be completely flat or it can be uh, uh, in the walls or in, in the in the ceiling, so uh, but uh, to make it that slim, it also uh, loses a quality because a, a lamp or, or a light is also defining the room, and it's something which is very familiar and which you which you have emotions about. So uh, we wanted to create a LED light which still transports uh, uh, this, these these feelings or these emotions. So we started with a um, 2D sketch, a sketch of, a, of a light and then we made a, a physical product out of it. It's called the 2D LED. Yeah. And then we also did a pendant version of that. Uh, yeah. So then in another product. Um, we all wear trousers every day. We have uh, um, pockets in our trousers, and um, uh, what is more easier than uh, putting on a uh, pair of pants in the morning? So we wanted to have a um, a product that is works as easy as putting on a pair of pants in the morning. So in the end, we came up with this idea for a chair that works actually the same way, but. Um, in this uh, product, the pair of pants is the seating, and you just pull it over the wooden structure, so you have something like a pair of pants you can sit on. So next approach, which is also quite untypical for German design, uh, put smiles on faces. Um, so um, this is actually a candle holder, which um, just uses the, the force of the um, power plug um, to give analog light. Um, and it's quite uh, an interesting object because uh, when you first see it, you, you think there's something wrong here. And, uh, most people uh, who see it, they, um, of course, it's a functional object. It uh, it works quite well, but uh, it's also um, a bit of a project which makes people laugh or puts smiles on faces. So.
So then um, a third strategy would be uh, just we say do less and this is something which also uh, will become relevant uh, if you design smart, smart products. Um, from our um, point of view it's, it's quite a good strategy just to do less and not to do everything which is possible. For example, um, we found out that if you have a sheet of paper and you just draw a line on it and then you fold it and that line, you all of a sudden get a functional object. So you have a, a rectangular piece of uh, sheet of metal, you fold it in, one, in one, uh, one way and you all of a sudden have a shelf that you can mount on the wall. Yeah. Very simple, very and, short. <laughs> and um, if you would have just a straight line, then it would be quite a boring shelf and here you ha suddenly have a quite sculptural object which looks different from every perspective. So um, it was a, yeah, it's a quite a minimal approach uh, with a quite f a formal, quite interesting outcome. Another minimal approach is um, we thought of what do you need to create a vase actually? What is the minimum you need to have? And everybody at home has a glass or something he collects, like a, a cup or something that he, yeah. These are collecting items that we get from somewhere from a travel and we, we, have a, we, we are attached to it because we um, have memories with it. So we just created a stage for flowers where you can put your glass if you want this and then uh, you just need something to hold the flower in the place. So this is also our minimal ways, also a very minimal approach to design. Yeah, this is uh, an example of um, uh, how is it called the wood uh, intarsia intarsia technique, and uh, we wanted to design a product where the intarsias are there for a purpose. So, because you, you do a lot of effort there, and it's just decoration, but we thought it could also have a function. So I don't know if you see that. That's uh, a wooden clock. Uh, and uh, the sections of the intarsias, uh, they, they show you the time. Because the, the veneer goes in different directions. So, here's something, unfortunately I've, I've forgotten to bring the object. Uh, it's uh, discover new material properties. Um, in 10 years ago, um, or maybe 15 years ago, um, companies started to use silicon for kitchen products. Silicon is um, quite good material for, for these kind of purposes because it's very heat resistant and um, it's, it's also flexible. So you use it, for example, for cake molds and yeah, for, for uh, all kinds of kitchen tools. But um, uh, we, we've never worked with this material before, so um, um, what we found out is that uh, beside it is um, heat resistant, which is quite, a, quite good for a trivet, uh, it's, and it's flexible. It also has, um, if you shape it right, two stable positions. So what you see here is the same trivet, but uh, in the one position um, it is uh, um, uh, it's the, the natural position and you can flip it inside and then it has a second stable uh, position. So um, you have one trivet for two different sizes of pots. For example, the, the, in the open position you can use it for a pan and in the, in the small position you can use it for storage but also for smaller pots. So, um, and actually you can only find these um, uh, um, material properties um, if you if you try it, if you have the material in your hand and you just uh, play around with it, and uh, we we uh, we came to this idea because there's a, a, a small child game. Uh, it's it's uh, it's made of rubber and you you push. Um, yeah, it's it's half. A, a, it's like a little dome. Yeah, a little dome, and you push it in the middle, and then you put it on the floor, and then. At some some stage, it starts to pop. So it also has uh, one 
very stable position and one position which is stable for like 20 seconds. So here we have two stable positions. So it's always uh, worth to really um, discover these materials which are there and to, to, um, to make experiments with, with these materials. So next point is you should question norms and rituals. So these are some guys uh, who um, don't enjoy their party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and one reason is maybe because they don't have guests, or the guests all take the photo. I don't know. Um, and the other reason might be they don't. They have a big cake, but they don't know how to divide the cake. <laughs> That's why we uh, thought of a product that takes on this question and. Um, you have the situations that you have a birthday party and everybody wants to have a piece of cake and everybody wants, of course, to have a different size of piece of cake. So but normally you would never share a cake uh, unequal. You would say uh, everybody has to get the same um, piece or uh, that, that's, uh, that would be the normal approach to say uh, we are fair and uh, all of you uh, um, should, should have the same amount of cake. But in reality, that's that's not fair because one guy is two meters tall, and uh, like uh, Mikkel, where are you? Uh, <laughs> and he would you eat the big piece, I yeah. guess. <laughs> and, and also, you have uh, you have the situation that you, that your mom, for example, says, "Oh, come on, uh, take a little more," or "I want a small piece of, uh, please, a small, please, 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 a small piece of cake," and then in the end, uh, you have such a big slice on your on your. Um, yeah, plate. So uh, here you can choose and uh, the, the cake mold is called the SXL cake because you can say I want the S piece or the M or the L or the XL. And now if our friends would have had this cake they <laughs> would have a better, a better party probably. <laughs> yeah this is a, a, a saving box or piggy bank and um, we, we thought of uh, also a different approach. Uh, what happens if not just one person uh, saves, uh, saves the money in the piggy bank, but, but it's, it's two. Uh, so uh, it works like a, a measure scale. Like a balance. Like a balance. So uh, if you put money in one slot, the, the piggy bank turns to this direction. And if you put money in the other slot, uh, you can equal it or uh, you can uh, yeah, it's it's a balance. So now you can start. For example, if you're a couple, you can say, "Oh, I saved more money than you did." You can, but you can also say, for example, uh, "This is grandma and this is grandpa, uh, who who gives you more money." Or uh, you can you can also save uh, for for reasons. You can it's uh, you can you can write on the piggy bank. So it's uh, uh, unglazed porcelain where you can can write on, and uh, you can write the reason on. Could also be like, uh, like holidays and shopping, uh, shopping. versus donation. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So you have, you have uh, thousands of options, thousands of options here. Yeah. And, um, sometimes you also get to new products or ideas when you just play around. Uh, this is kind of a um, a puzzle or a, um, a toy, and uh, it's. Uh, it's three parts, and we, we thought, okay, uh, what else is three? What, what can we just attach to this puzzle? And we came to spoon, knife, and fork, and then we just taped it on, the, on, the, on this puzzle. And after that, we started thinking, what has happened here? Or what did we do here? In the first moment, it started to, it started, it looked like complete nonsense what we did there, but then actually, we found out that first of all we've created a table decoration. Usually you do that with a, a, a tissue and you, you make a swan or something or if you're, if you're not handy you cannot do anything. Uh, so um, first of all it, it looks quite nice if you, if you think of a table with, uh, um, with lots of cutleries like this on your, on your, um, on your plate. 
Uh, and secondly, it's also a conversation starting tool. Imagine you, you are in a round of 10 people and you don't know each other and you have the, the dinner and uh, you want to start eat or you, uh, um, you'll discuss how, how can I open this. And because it's, it's a kind of a, a trick or a knot, you have to, uh, you have to, sh sh you have to share your thoughts on this. And uh, I think uh, after a while you, you'll, you'll know some people better because you have talked with them. So it's a bit of a small talk tool. And of course it also works as a cutlery. So um, next topic, um, rethink old inventions with new technology. Uh, that's something which, which was quite new for us and uh, we had this approach uh, one year ago, it, it first came to our mind. Um, we were asked by uh, BASF, the, the German chemical company, to design a concept bike for them. And um, BASF was founded in 1865, and uh, we knew that this uh, bike had didn't have. A, it was just a. Um, a carrier of technology and of materials, uh, um, um, but it didn't have to fulfill a real reason, like a, act as a good working bike. Um, so uh, it was for us. It was also quite difficult to do this bike for BASF because BASF is a company which usually just sells uh, uh, powders, grains, and. Uh, um, uh, liquids and uh, they ha don't have a, a heritage in products or they don't have a maybe, tradition. Maybe you know the last product of them which was like a cassette tape. Yeah. Do you still know that? <laughs> that was the last real product for yeah. the market they had. Now they only do like chemicals and, and granulats for plastics. So we just looked back in history and, and saw that the, in the founding year of BSF at that time also the, the pedal bike was in, invented. So we thought of um, um, uh, of this first bike and uh, just we wanted to think this bike in new materials because uh, at that time uh, this bike was replaced for some reasons uh, and most of these reasons were um, um, also material issues. So uh, this is the bike from 1865 and um, this is the bike we designed with 24 um, high performance materials by BASF and of course this is not a good working bike as a bike but uh, um, when you look into the details um, it was quite inspiring to, to look back into the um, into history um, for example in 1865 there were no um, uh, air filled tires uh, they in the beginning they had like metal rims and then they started with the first uh, rubber tires which were of a solid rubber and they were quite heavy of course and uh, also they um, they didn't uh, um, offer a, a, a comfortable riding uh, but they were puncture proof which is quite 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 cool in a way and which we still uh, would like to have I think uh, nowadays. So uh, we found a material in PASF which is called Infinergy and which they uh, use for the Adidas <coughs> shoes and it's it looks like styrofoam but it has the um, and it's almost as light as styrofoam but it has um, uh, incredible um, rebound and it's quite um, uh, rigid too. So um, BASF also tried to um, implement this material for bike tires, but they uh, just look back uh, on the um, status of bike tires nowadays. So they wanted to put it in into the um, uh, yeah. The, what's it called? The rubber thing around the the tire. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, they just wanted to put this material in, inside the tire, but this didn't work out because you have the, the friction and uh, when it starts uh, making these uh, moves, movements, 
it's getting too hot in there and it, uh, the material starts to melt away. But uh, if you think um, of this material in the usage like they, like they would have done it in 1865, you wouldn't have had the, the tire around the, the thing. You, um, so we did the same thing. We just applied a, another uh, rigid rubber material on top of this Infinergy uh, or uh, this material. And uh, this is an approach which is quite relevant now for BSF and uh, which might be in the market in a couple of years. So the inspiration came from the past. So this is now, which actually industrial design is, is mostly about. Um, we are supposed to, to, to be problem solvers, um, but it's quite difficult to, to solve problems which are in the world for hundreds of years. For example, um, if I design a chair, uh, it's, uh, the chair is there for 8,000 years maybe, I don't know and it's very difficult to improve a, a chair and to find new solutions there. So um, sometimes it's better not to find um, uh, new solutions for old problems, but to find new solutions for new problems. For example, this, this is a picture of our office in uh, 2000, when did we do that? In 2008, 2006? Yeah. And we had this problem with all the cables, and you might know it as well, if you have all the technology around you, you have a big mess of cables and it's just dangled up a big salad under your table and it looks horrible. And, um, and this cable mess, of course, it started when, when, uh, when you had your first uh, mobile phones and your, laptop. your cameras and your laptop and all these devices which have to be charged all day. So we, we started to put that in a, in a shoebox, just out of a idea like that and we put it in a shoebox and all of a sudden it was everything was cleaned up because all the mess was in the shoebox so we thought okay this is a this is an idea this is actually a product why don't we make something out of it that everybody can have and uh, so we we went on a search to find a good shape and a really easy way to to use it where you actually take your own uh, power plug with uh, the three plugs and you put it in the box and you put a lid on top and then you, have, then you are set. So really low tech, but in the end it's a good solution for, for all the problems uh, we, we have with the cable. And actually <coughs> we did this and we figured out that we um, created a new category of product we didn't, which didn't exist before because we found, figured out that there is a problem and nobody has taken care of that so far. So in the meanwhile, um, you can get these kind of products from IKEA or other companies. They uh, took on this idea and, and made their own uh, products, which are solving the problem as we did. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, now, nowadays, I think there are probably more than 20 different uh, products in the market with the same typology. So. So another problem um, is something which is also uh, not new, but um, people tend to live in smaller spaces uh, 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 in the urban environment because uh, rents are getting higher and higher. So you have to be really careful with your space. And um, it's always good if you can des design something which is uh, space saving in the, in the non-active non position. Um, so here you see a, 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 draw, um, a drawer and you also see a whisk in the back and this whisk actually is quite difficult in a drawer because usually it, it starts to get uh, um, messed up or um, uh, yeah. if you want to pull your drawer back out then it somehow gets stuck and so on. So we, we thought of designing a, um, a whisk which is easy to put into a Draw a So this is a, the, the product which is actually uh, done for a company here from Copenhagen, Norm Copenhagen. Do you know Norman Copenhagen? Have you been in their store? A really nice store. So if you haven't been there, go there. It's on Öster, Öster. First we, uh, we know the first foldable whisk 
So uh, you just put up this uh, uh, little thing in the middle and then it uh, starts folding in the flat position. And of course you can still hang it somewhere, but you can also put it easily into your drawer. Yeah, now it comes to, to, the, uh, to what you are here for, I think, uh, designing smart products. Uh, we have to say that we've never put a smart product in the market, so we are not experts in designing. We are greenhorns. We are real greenhorns, but uh, um, I think that some of the strategies we use are, are also um, valid for, for, this, uh, for this task. So strategies that might or that may have a significant relevance for the design of smart products. Uh, I think do less is, is something is quite a good advice because with all these new um, sensors and uh, technologies and apps uh, and these uh, incredible amount of possibilities you have, you, you, tr you tend to put all these uh, different options just in one product. But, uh, if you do that, uh, you, you have the problem that in the end uh, it's quite difficult to understand this product. In the, in the, uh, if somebody wants to buy a product uh, in the internet, for example, you have like 10 seconds of time or of uh, which the, the customer looks at the product. It's, it's the same in, in the stores, you know, you, you walk down the shelves and then you take a look and if it, the product doesn't get you uh, in, in, in some seconds, um, you will probably never uh, experience how smart this product is. So uh, our advice would be to, to, to try to be a bit focused and not to put too many things in one, one product. Yeah, um, it might also be interesting to rethink old inventions with new technology. Um, because uh, some ideas are in the world for, for a long time. There are patents from the uh, 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, um, and the problems were there already. But uh, at that time, you couldn't find a, a, a real solution because you didn't have the, the technology. So these products uh, disappeared from the market, or they never made it into market. They were too expensive or too energy consuming or uh, the, the materials were not rigid enough. But uh, with, with our new technologies we have, it's, it's probably worth also to, to look not just to the state of art now and to improve the products which are, are there at the moment, but also to, to, to look uh, back, back in time and uh, to get inspiration from, from these times, from history. And of course, uh, it should also be, uh, it's, it's of course a strategy to, to, to with, with all these uh, uh, possibilities, we have to find new solutions for new problems. But uh, what, what is so interesting about um, smart products and uh, um, of these times, I, I have the feeling that um, also the, the technology affects our design strategies, because for the first time in, in decades, uh, designers have a real chance now uh, to find new solutions for old problems. And uh, um, I have the feeling that uh, this is uh, empowered by technology and we didn't have that for a long time, that you could uh, um, really find, or that, that it was easy to find new solutions for old problems. Uh, and. That's why I, I, I'm really happy to be a designer in, in, in that time now, because uh, sometimes it feels that the um, universe started to become larger and larger and um, with all these kind of options we have. So if, you, if we now uh, um, have the ability to, to go back to old problems, you can suddenly start to think about, for example, 
uh, energy boots which uh, harvest energy while you walk and which warm up your feet or which have a sensor inside uh, which me measures your feet temperature and uh, you can uh, um, you, you will never have cold feet in the winter anymore or in skiing for example uh, within your ski boots or you you might think of things like uh, you finally have a good solution for green wave cruising that you just uh, uh, put a sensor with a solar panel which can be attached easily to every uh, red light and which uh, um, um, sends signals to, to your car or to your smartphone and gives you advice how to drive or, or in which speed, for example. That's, that's something which, which could be... Uh, you don't have to uh, uh, build a new um, traffic light, you just attach this little detail and suddenly it's a smart traffic light. Or you could also uh, think of a uh, um, relocating uh, chip. Suddenly, um, you you are uh, you will not lose anything uh, anymore uh, because there's a small chip in your in your wallet or in your golf ball or in your uh, um, in your handbag or. Uh, uh, you have a like something like a fake credit card, and uh, the, if, if a, uh, somebody uh, stole your your um, your wallet, uh, steals your wallet, then uh, you can re relocate your wallet. There are thousands of options. Um, or you can think, for example, of a smart shower head, which uh, has a temperature sensor inside, and. Uh, it uh, only gives full pressure, pressure, and uh, it, um, uh, or it deflects the beam as long as the temperature is not uh, the chosen one. And then suddenly it starts to get into position, and you, you'll never have uh, cold water in the beginning when you start showering, for example. Um, and so, uh, as I said, you. We are in a uh, we're living in a world where we suddenly can uh, uh, think again about old problems, and uh, that's kind of inspiring, I think. So this is pretty much it, and uh, just small advice we can give to to design smart products. <laughs> Understanding of uh, of one subject, uh, but. Um, we also uh, learn um, how to access information quite quick. So um, we, we love not to be specialists. And I think uh, if, you, if you want to be creative or inventive, it's, it's sometimes it's good uh, not, to be, not to stick in, in one area and uh, to, yeah, to, to try to approach areas where, have you, where you've never been before. Are there any, yeah. yeah, I was thinking a lot of your products seems to be uh, not only like aesthetically pleasing but also functional in some sense or maybe multifunctional. So where would you say the difference was between functional design and smart products or smart design? Actually, for me it feels that there is not much uh, difference in the approach or in the um, because uh, if you design a smart product, of course, I can put lots of sensors inside a product and then I, I see what happens. That would be a, a strategy to, to see, okay, it's just the, the, the playful approach, which we also use in, in some of the products. Uh, but in the end, it's, it's really uh, cool if you have a real benefit or if you, uh, if you, um, if you have a smart solution. So. Um, I think it's. Uh, so maybe there is no difference. I, I I feel that there's no difference. It's maybe in a different scale, or it's uh, as I said, the universe winds up. So uh, you have you can now think of uh, um, um, products which are completely which which are future visions of ten years ago, or which were like uh, in a Futurama show or something, uh, or in Star Trek. Uh, so. Um, and of course, that's that's interesting. Are there any maybe challenges what they presented? I was just thinking a lot of your designs are quite playful, and I like that a lot. 
for instance, the Cookie uh, Maker, very cool. Uh, but I was thinking, is it how do you how do you make how do you put playfulness into smart products? Is that uh, is that possible? Is that uh, something you've done or seen? Yeah, actually, I, I think um, lots of smart products are quite playful uh, because uh, uh, first of all you start with the sensor um, which is inside the product and then um, you can play around with the um, with the software or with the um, what you can do with the sensor and so uh, in the end uh, some of these smart products are also open source and uh, you can do uh, with, with them whatever you want so it's quite a playful approach so um, yeah, but it, it really depends on um, if you want to um, let the customer play with the product, um, then it might be a, a product which is more geeky or which is uh, has a small target group, or um, you as the designer or the inventor of this product, you, you play and uh, in the end uh, the customer just has a, a, a simple smart solution and he, he doesn't have to play that much. Uh, it really depends on what the customer also wants or, or what, you, what group you are targeting to. Uh, we have the feeling, we, we, uh, we are mostly, it's, it's quite interesting, um, many of our, our products, um, we know how they sell because we get royalties. So, uh, and um, for example, this uh, charge box is a product which is not that playful and it's quite uh, um, uh, it's also not not very um, uh, decorative but it's, it is selling quite well the cake won't also sell quite quite well but it's, uh, it has a certain peak and it went down because uh, at some some point everybody has seen that product and uh, you would never buy like 10 of these cake molds because you just need maybe one or you give it as a present or as a gift and uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, do, you, uh, do you design and produce these products yourself or at least for finding some of them? Um, like the box uh, and and all the other amazing tools, I see, I recognize some of them obviously, but uh, when you invent something new, then where does that invention come from? Out of your creative designs, but do you go to a customer or how does it work? Yeah, we work together with uh, producers. We don't produce ourselves so far because we didn't, we wanted to be designers and not uh, producers in the end. And if we, if we start to produce, we would have, uh, and sell the products, we would have to be in the fair and try to sell the product and then take care of the distribution and then take care of the uh, things that turn back and all this kind of hassle we, we don't want to take care of because we want to work as uh, designers and invent new things or design new things. That's why we decided to not do this, but uh, when we decided that Kickstarter was not there, so um, this opens up new possibilities. So. We, so far we didn't do any Kickstarter project, but we always play with the thought. It's very tempting for us. So, so what do you do when you come up with a new invention? Yeah. Yeah, well, actually, it's, it's, it's not like um, um, you, you get a real brief by the company. You know, you, Usually it's just uh, that they say, uh, we need something like a new wardrobe. But they don't give us a, um, a problem which should be solved. So uh, this comes by ourselves. So we develop the idea. Um, okay, if I um, I won't I don't want to uh, design a wardrobe. I want to find a solution to uh, when I enter my house to uh, easy store my uh, um, my jacket. So this is the the first target. I, I don't think in a wardrobe. I think in uh, at it from a higher perspective. And then I try to find <laughs> solutions which could be in the end something completely different. And in this case, you have a, a customer. Asking. No, 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 we don't. Sometimes, sometimes we have a customer who says uh, wardrobe, that's the brief, and sometimes we even don't have a, a customer. We just uh, um, see problems or and we, find, we try to find solutions, uh, and when we have these solutions, we approach customers. Yeah.
Um, a lot of your products are very tangible and very, um, there's a lot of form design in it and you can do stuff with it. But, but all these smart products, where it's more the technology, where you're big is where you hide the technology in it, where a lot of design might be purely di digital external. Do you see yourself in that space? Is that as designers? Actually, I, I want to invent this smart product and uh, in the end I also have to uh, shape it or to give it a shape uh, and then um, we always uh, have the idea that the, the, the shape or the formal uh, or the, and the materials, they have to serve the idea. So uh, in the end, uh, if, the, if the idea needs something very minimal to, to, uh, to make it accessible, or, uh, then it will be a very minimal design. And uh, yeah, as I said, the, the design should always uh, serve serve the, the idea in the best way. Does that answer your question? Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of. Uh, um, I was I was more thinking about like uh, some of these products coming out. Like you have a candle, and it's just a candle, still a candle. You put a sensor in it, and the whole design, the whole thing you are you're working with is is virtual or digital uh, is and yeah it's more it, are you seeing it going that direction or would you stay at, at the smart tangible products um, I it's, I have the feeling that that I'm completely open uh, for the future I don't know what I'll, I'll be doing <laughs> in 10 years and if I if I uh, in 10 years I still have to de uh, to design physical products maybe they all disappeared and uh, it's just uh, um, ideas which uh, um, became um, yeah, some kind of software. I, I have the feeling that I, I have the skills uh, to, um, to invent things and, and it could be something physical but also something not physical. So uh, I think it's mostly the, the tools and methods which you learn which are kind of universal. So, um, you as uh, product designers, what are the, the primary barriers that you see for you to work with new technologies and electronics and adding that to your products? Uh, what, what are the primary challenges for you to work with it? I think one, one really difficult thing is to keep track of the, of the uh, evolution of the smart technology. Because now I, I talk to a few people of you and uh, that are really involved in this uh, kind of topic, and, and they we had a lot of interesting uh, talks about this. And, and um, Alan sitting there, he thought he showed me a really interesting uh, sensor that he has. That uh, yeah, we we uh, would not maybe not see like this if, if, because we don't uh, work with that topic every day. So that's why we like then to meet experts like. Uh, you and uh, or the Delta uh, people to, to get to know uh, that technology. Yeah, for us it was uh, quite, quite a big eye-opener when, when Delta approached us and uh, uh, they came uh, to Hanover and we had this workshop uh, because, as I said, we are not experts and we cannot be, um, uh, we, we don't want to be experts so we need to get access to ex experts. and. <laughs> Uh, I think Delta is a, is a very cool company because they are uh, very open to share their um, their insights or their their expertise. And uh, if if I would uh, think of designing uh, smart products, I, I would I would head to to these guys or to to somebody who can pr provide a similar service. Comments, questions, challenges, good conversations that you had with the person inside you that you just want to share? Yeah. Just a quick question. This candle? Yeah. Not this one, but the other one. But yeah. this one as well. Are they actually, you say analog? Yeah. Or do you put a candle inside yeah. and you light it with a, yeah. with that's, a, that's a regular that's so it's more it's the holder, huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's just to use the, the uh, podcast. Uh, as the holder. To hold yeah. your candle holder. And, and here, this is also a product. Uh, which nonsense. was in the market for some years. It was only sold in museum shops. Uh, yeah, of course the switch has no function. It's just a uh, decoration <laughs> to open up your mind. Always.
yeah, of course, in the end, uh, you have to have a product in, uh, that is um, that people want to buy or they, that they can buy because it's not too expensive. So, in the, in the design process, there's a lot of limitations um, that lead to a final product in the end, and uh, they're we facing the same problems. I think everybody faces that if you want to bring a product to the market. You, that's that's the biggest thing that actually causes you troubles within the process. But I, I don't feel that it's om uh, always trouble because it also gives you some uh, borders or, or guidelines to, uh, to focus on your target. Uh, and um, yeah, sometimes uh, it's quite good to have these limitations. Yeah. You have to get creative to, to make something out of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you.